That's it. Today there is no introduction. We're just gonna jump right into the topic of today's podcast. So let's go. And this week it's a bit controversial because we're gonna talk about Israel and the actual war that is happening in Gaza, due to many, many reasons that are quite prevalent. But first, if you are listening, yes, it's correct, I'm sick, I have, I'm super congestionated, which probably will make this podcast a hundred times worse. Uh, well, it's actually quite, quite bad, because uh, as everyone says, my pronunciation is really, really bad. Welcome, thank you very much for it. I'm not a native English speaker. So it's obviously that I speak quite bad, but I speak better than 80% of the people I know, so it is what it is. Okay. Once we have this out of the way, and we already know that I'm ill, uh, my nose is actually completely obstruct, uh, obstructed, yeah, like I cannot even breathe, I have to do it through my mouth, which actually makes pronunciation and speaking overall a lot more uh, tiring and super fatigating to, to do so and my brain vibrates so I get super tired of talking for a while and yeah my speaking is 10 times worse but it is what it is I like that sentence a lot now Israel I brought this topic today because well I have one more in the chamber which is my thesis which is already published but the next part of is actually me doing the presentation, doing those 10 minutes live for you guys. So I will record them and I actually post them as a podcast with an intro with an introduction to it, but that will be uh, next week's. Today is Israel. Um, I haven't actually read a lot about the topic because politics and war is a topic complicated. It's difficult to to analyze is difficult to understand, you need a lot of history, and you need to be really careful with how you interpret things if you don't want to decline yourself for one side of the scale or the other. Definitely, what we have in our, ma- in our hands, and the actual problem, is really, really worrying. Like, I'm worried about that situation. We haven't actually finished Ukraine. That, that chapter is not closed. And we are opening one right after, like right in the middle of Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia are in war. Like people that are in their country. The same that we have in Israel. Okay? And don't get distracted about the new upcoming thing. But this topic is actually starting to, to get repetitive. How can we in the 21st century have two wars happening at the same time with this magnitude of countries and, and this relevance. Like, Ukraine by itself is already insanely big. Israel, the conflict, the problem, it's also the same thing. And it looks like Ukraine is way worse than Israel, but I think both both are the same because what this is actually causing is more and more and more reputation, more and more people getting super angry. Um, is this gonna be like that for for the rest of our life? Like I'm 24, so what I'm supposed to see? Like in less than three, four years, I've seen a pandemic and two wars. Like, are we actually going in that direction? Because I'm actually starting to get worried about it. And and actually, it's sad. It's sad to see people in war. The first attack by the Ham- the Hamsas, I think they're called, is outrageous. But it was like, it's literally a terrorist attack. But the response from Israel, and I know the history, I know how much they suffer, Afghanistan, all of that things, is actually, well, the uh, Oms already said that it's against human laws, it's against uh, sanity in the world, like cutting electricity, cutting laws, people having to migrate again. Like, I'm not going to enter in like the conflicts, in the reasoning, 
in the politics, in the ideology, because it's completely separated from me. I haven't lived it, I haven't read enough to actually put my word or my finger on one of those topics. But I'm, what I'm seeing is the responsive, this anger, this fighting. It, there's no middle point to anything so far. Okay? And this destruction brings destruction. That's the rule. The rule. It's like the Egyptians back in the day, an eye for an eye. Like they literally are doing what they're given. And if we start by doing this, then we will carry over. What is the next thing? In Spain, Catalonia will do in a civil war because they want to go independent. Uh, who else? China, Korea. Uh, in America, maybe Mexico from the USA, I don't know, I, I don't care, I can just invent in countries who may have some rivalities. But why is this about wars and like fighting for uh, who's more right or, or, or wrong? Like, <clears throat> And then you have the other side of the wall who's not in war, who just exists to refugees. Like, with this rhythm, we're going to end up with Zones that are completely isolated. So who's going to live in Ukraine? No one. Who's going to live in Israel if this happens? No one. Who's going to live in Palestine? No one. Those cities, those territories in the world are going to be empty for no human to live in. And then we're just going to have over super saturated cities in Europe, in America, uh, in, uh, in Morocco, which makes me reflect on the other conflicts all over instead of going for pacifics like for trying to solve it okay now it's just literally take the guns out to go for them and try to kill them or, or try to solve it by, by, by brute force which i don't like at all one country does an offense the other response with an even bigger one so i can actually go back and hit again because my cause at the first when i did the first attack was uh based on a hundred years old history so now i have the claim and the own and the the uh, call it whatever you want to do this again and again and again and it's because the history of my country allows me this is literally second world war with nazis and it's irrefutable evidence what nazis this in the first and the second world war but the thing with the, second, the First and the Second World War, that we call it that way because no one put a name before. But if we actually call Ukraine plus Israel the Third World War, it's just a name. So think it about it this, this way. Mm, World Wars are so big in magnitude because historian people decided to put a name and because the the effects of destruction were so big, so many people died, and it was through so much time that they had no more option than to put a name, a name that actually remember from history. But now this could be World War Three. Think it about not a massive like it, for a World War to happen, it doesn't need means five, six, seven, ten countries fighting in two, three territories. It's not like if every country in the world joins to defeat someone trying to invade Europe. It's not like that. We don't need every single part of the world involved to call it a world war. A world war is a, a war for me. Literally, this is the simplest definition that uh, anyone will give you. A world war is a war in Earth. So Ukraine is doing a war in Earth, it's happening, it's, it's going through, yeah. Israel and Palestine are, yeah. If you get this two, three, for like 10 years, can we call it a world war? If now another country happens, their own disputes in the other side of the world, yeah. It's small, not so small war happening during a period of time with a result of destruction of people dying. It's a world war, it's a conflict. Like, why did we even bother with 25 years of cold war between the intelligence uh, in Russia and America literally doing the spy 
movies, but in real life, to avoid a third massive destruction, if we now just gonna go and explode with literally anything. And this is blaming every single one of these sites. Okay? Those two that are fucking, the third one that is watching from the barrier, and us as humans that live in society and they literally, I'm not involved with Ukraine, I'm not involved with Israel, I haven't done anything to that, and I'm not even helping in positive or negative way. So, I don't know, it's like we're just watching, the other two are fighting, and we just let it happen until there is uh, no going back point. We leave us with a really, really sad paradigm of the world. What, what are we doing? Where are we going? I know I'm not giving answers, I'm just putting my mind out. I just read it for a while. And actually this happened because of, for my French course, I had to bring a new factuality. And because it's French and I can read somehow French language, I went into Le Mans, uh, France. Uh, and there is where I watched this news and I had to actually think about it. This was like the first minister of France doing the speech about the Gazas and then the OMS uh, doing there with how little respect for uh, human rights uh, Israel had by cutting the electricity, the water, and, and I was just watching the two sides fighting one or the other. And I actually made some notes and I've been following scenes. I've been some videos of Israel people living outside the world, really worried about their country. Of course, who wouldn't be? It's like if I leave Spain and then come back with a civil war. But I wouldn't like that because there are families, there are friends, there are histories that you live there, you're your your life is there and you have that sense of uh of remembering no? all the things that you live in and uh, it's quite sad it's quite sad and honestly I'm, I'm really worried about these two wars coming in because then we have uh, so it's, uh, North Korea which is actually <laughs> another story to to take in consideration so you who knows if they decide to throw a fucking missile and Instead of landing in the sea, lands and beating the coast and kills like a whole town or city. And down there in Indonesia or China or who the fuck cares. It's not about where it lands, it's about the actually have risk of happening. And it's to be worried because if all we see now, or all the countries are seen as war, war and war, they're just going to be literally acting no, they are reacting. They will be re they will react to things. Okay, it's not the same. If I'm calm, sitting down, living life, then if I know there's two civil wars, but I have some interest, past interest in this, those in any of those wars, and I have a fear of getting attacked because I'm not gonna be sitting down, chilling, and trying to bring a conversation. I'm gonna react. I'm literally a cat with their names out, try, waiting for the human to go down, put his hand so he can actually bite and uh, scratch him. And that's really, really worrying for me. Well, a little break, my throat started to nibble and I couldn't even breathe anymore. It's like been like around 15 minutes and I'm actually going and starting to, to fade out. Uh, there is not much to this. This is just me after I saw the news, after being worried because this situation is, is important. The world, the, the path we're taking and where we're going, it's no good. And we are starting to repeat the same mistakes we did. And it's fucking hilarious how the Simpsons got it right by like Homer Simpson falling down 325 times to the same rock and like by the, the good old well-known topic of the human is the only animal can, that can fall twice with the same rock. We are just going back at it again. And it's completely unacceptable. I'm literally dying. So this is the second time I made a mini cut on the podcast. I'm gonna take a candy for 
I mean candy. I'm gonna try to finish the podcast really, really fast. War is not a good thing. Um, I'm not even going in who should be right or wrong, and no one should ever think that the problem is one side sole. War and every problem in life happens because there are two parties, and both are wrong. More or less in percentages. One is righter or wronger, whatever you say. But it's the fault of both sides. We should focus on not on who's right, but on mitigating the big effects. Going for a dialogue, and one thing only, which is the whole purpose of my existence right now, common sense. No one is using the common sense, thinking about who's affected, who's not, the consequences, and the life in the coming 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm 24, and I don't know what my future will look like, but if the world keeps going like this, who's going to be safe? And if countries, politicians, and the military do not start using common sense, and if no more young people start thinking like, okay, it's not about who's right or who's wrong, it's about the overall safety and the well-being of the planet Earth, of our society as humans, no matter where you live, then these two wars are the beginning of what could literally be in books of history at the decade, the half century or the century of repeated wars one after another after another. The military power is bigger than ever, the knowledge is bigger than ever with the internet, guns are there, it's easier. There are so many in cross interests between that. But if no one sits down and thinks about the wealth, the well-being, and the wealth in life, not in money, of future generations of ourselves, then we are not going to have to worry about the climate change, about an alien invasion, about a fucking meteor, because we will be in the ones that when all of those natural disasters happen, we wouldn't even be there. We don't need to wait for an alien invasion or a meteor to die and lose human society. We just need to keep doing what we do without using that common sense that I so much predicate about using. When I read this, I, mean, I immediately thought this was terrorism. And then saw what the response was. And what the arms did, what other countries are looking at, and I think the same way with the Ukraine or Russia. You could be righter or wronger, more right or more wrong, properly said. But that doesn't solve anything. Being right or being wrong should be the last of our warnings. It should be about how to finish things as soon as possible and then in a table quiet and calm, find the middle point of common sense. Oof, work is never easy, and doing this podcast, doing this self-reflection is one of the things I enjoy the most. So thank you very much for being there, if you listen, thank you if you participate, and if not, thank you as well, because it serves me as well as my intention of talking, of expressing and putting English words outside my mouth, which is complicated because I know I don't pronounce well, because I know I don't use English as much as I should, but because motivates me, makes me happy on my side. And maybe, just maybe, if one single person, this is every Time I said the same thing. If only one person listened to a sentence, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Well, 
method is out of the game completely. So I'll leave it here. You know, next week is not an episode, is the 10 minute presentation with an introduction and an ending that I will be separately about my thesis, about how I'm going to do 10 minute presentation of my case study for Nike and a supplement that uh, likely it will serve me for who knows. So next week, be here to that for me, very special moment. Really, really makes me happy. Thank you very much. Listen, read, and overall bring your own conclusion to these topics that concerns us right now.